the bookkeeping journey. What should you be doing when? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. The bookkeeping journey, adventure, however you want to turn it, is something that anyone who goes into the business is going to have to contend with. And it is a bit of an adventure because when you first get started, you probably don't need the most complicated of approaches. And for a lot of people, their bookkeeping may just literally start with a separate bank account, whether that be a limited company bank account, a separate one in your own name, just so that you can separate out those transactions. And to be fair, that may be all you need when you get started. As you'll have seen on some other videos, you'll have seen that actually for a single property, whether it be in your own name or in a company, if it's a simple buy to let property with rent coming in, insurance, mortgage, and very few expenses coming out, you may just be able to keep a bank account and that's as much bookkeeping as you need to do. However, as you do start to develop a portfolio and grow your business, this is where added complications start to come in. So for any budding portfolio owner, it may be you're going to get started on something like a spreadsheet as probably the next logical free approach to doing some sort of bookkeeping. Now, where we're talking about bookkeeping, this is very much talking about the transactional day-to-day, -day, what is happening in your business. So this is keeping a record of the money coming in. This is keeping a record of the money going out. So that you can see what are you spending your money on, what, what is coming in. Now, for a property business, one of the key things I would probably say is knowing which property it relates to. And whether you're doing a spreadsheet or a bank account or a more complex area, which we'll get on into a mi minute, knowing which property it relates to gives you as much data as possible. And if you're doing things regularly, which I would definitely recommend you do from day one, that you do keep track of what is related to which property and how things are paid. Now, the reason I say a spreadsheet as the next logical step is because on a spreadsheet, you can either keep a separate tabs, which is for each different property that you maybe have, or you can keep one tab with all the properties, but you can have a column which tells you which property those expenses relate to. And when I say what those expenses relate to, I'm literally talking what they are. Is it that you've gone for a coffee, coffee with a property investor? Is it that you've had some repairs to a kitchen sink? What is the expense incurring? And the reason for asking this is because I have been on one of those spreadsheets that a client has set over, and it's great where they tell me we've spent 20 pounds at Amazon. However, the question is, well, what have you spent at Amazon and for which property? And as I'm going with most people watching today will notice, if you buy something from Amazon, you can provide pretty much most things from Amazon. So what is it that you've actually bought? So just having the supply of the person who you bought it off is not always going to be the best approach. Obviously, even going to somewhere like Asda or B&M or some of these different shops that you go to, there is so much variety of things that you can buy at these shops. The question really is, what did you actually buy on this occasion? So just having the shop, the supplier who you bought it for isn't always enough information. Obviously, hopefully you are keeping all of your receipts or a photo of all of your receipts or a scan. And if you're keeping a copy of all of your receipts, then you can go back and look at the receipt. However, I'd probably say it's easier to probably look down a spreadsheet with sufficient information for your accountant for you rather than have to go back to the file or open the scanned copy of that receipt. So in my opinion, you're better putting as much information on that spreadsheet as possible so that you can see exactly what is happening. So that hopefully covers your ins, your outs of what is going on in your business at the early stages. And 
I'd probably say one, two, three, even up to three to five maybe. That's maybe pushing it a little bit, but up to a certain number of properties. Having a spreadsheet or some sort of notes or Word or some sort of document um, spreadsheet version, is it Numbers, Excel, those sorts of ones to summarize the information probably works for you and it keeps the cost down so you're not having to pay out for some software. However, at a certain point, you will need some software. And the reason I say that is because it starts to get more complicated. You can't get any information out of what you're putting on a spreadsheet in the same way as software. And as you get to a certain size, making tax digital is going to kick in. So you're going to have to be doing certain submissions on a regular basis. And the software, hopefully, that you choose will be able to deal with that side of things as well. So at a certain point, you'll hit that turning point of getting some sort of software. And there's different options out there. For a landlord, you've got kind of two directions to take. One of which is more a landlord focused software, or the other is a more bookkeeping kind of finances focused software. And the reason I say there's several options is because you've got things like QuickBooks Online and Xero, which are amazing software, However, those are very much for bookkeeping and keeping that side of things. So we work with both of those softwares and sometimes Sage as well. And I know there's others like Free Agent, Cashflow. There's many on the market. So it's just a matter of finding the one that you prefer your accountant potentially works with and you can figure out how to work. But then in most of those softwares, what you can do is you have classes and locations or some sort of data ability to actually tag a specific transaction to a property. And the ideal and amazing thing about the software is you can then pull up a report just to show what that property is doing. So that's great to see, well, what income have I had? Which one have I got the most repairs on? And are they all still cash flowing? Are they all still making profits based on what's coming in and going out? So that really does start to give you data to be able to manage your portfolio which ultimately bookkeeping has two kind of key things I would probably say. It's keeping track of all of the transactions so you can see what's happening, which enables you to do things like your company accounts, the corporation tax or your self-assessment. It's got all that data together. But one of the important reasons for doing bookkeeping is to enable you to be able to manage your business. So rather than go off hunches of, oh, I think I'm doing about this, it means you can actually go in and go, well, actually, this is what I am actually achieving rather than I think I'm getting about this. So as you get onto these sorts of software, it is giving you that finite data so you can actually see a summary of what's happening and you can go into the detail if you need to go into the detail. So where you do find this property's cost me five grand in repairs, I didn't realise it had got to that number. You can actually go in and go, well, what are these repairs? okay, I've had a new boiler, I've had to have a new front door, the tenants damaged the wall, what, what has happened on that property? And now you can kind of go, well, actually, that's costing me too much a year, I'm going to sell that property, and then that improves the whole of the portfolio's performance. But without that data to actually be able to see exactly how each of your pro properties is doing, it's a bit more guesswork and it's more a feeling rather than a fact that you're working with. The other side of things then comes to more landlord focused products. So we've got things like hammock, landlord vision, and I know there's a few others out there on the market. And the difference with these ones is they probably come from a more landlord focused approach. So you can put all your landlord details, you can put when your gas certificate's got to be in, you can put your tenants details, you can put your mortgage details on quite a few of them. You can see what loan to value you've got when your mortgage ends. It'll tell you if your tenants in arrears and all these sorts of useful things for us as landlords, especially if you're managing some of that portfolio yourself. And maybe some of it you're not. You may have someone manage all of it or none of it. So these sorts of softwares are enabling you to kind of manage the portfolio as well as the finances side of things. And most of them are going to be compliant with the Making Tax Digital for those doing self-assessment. 
and quite a few of them will also work with limited companies. Now, one that I've seen things like Hammock, one of the great features I've seen on that one is it works with limited companies and your own ones in your own name. So if you've got a bit of a mixed portfolio, you can actually put all of your properties in one place and it'll give you reports for both of the different ownership types. And I'm sure there's more of them out there. So check out the software and have a look at what's going to work for you. So you've kind of got a few considerations. Does it do what you want? How much is it gonna cost? Because ultimately it's going to be a cost to the business, but hopefully a beneficial cost because it'll give you the information and the data that you're wanting to see. So you can really manage your business rather than react to your business. This is normally the end goal of most businesses because ultimately you will get to a point where you need to be maintaining this information to enable you to respond to what's happening in your portfolio and to be able to fulfill your legal requirements for your company or for you as a self-employed or property portfolio owner. So I would expect anyone who has any more complications than one, two, three properties to be ending up in this sort of area. Now, one question I probably get is, do I have to do this myself? And the answer is no. Ultimately, you can always get support with your bookkeeping and there are many, many bookkeepers out there. And what a bookkeeper will do for you is they will make sure all the information is entered onto your software. However, I will say for anyone who has property, it is not a completely hands-off approach. And the reason it's not a hands-off approach is because if you're just paying for things through the company bank account for Amazon, for example, let's go to our good old friend there. Again, the question will be, what is it? So you've got to make sure you're putting the invoices into the software so the evidence is there. But unless it has a shipping address to a specific property, it may not give them which property it relates to. So to be able to get the end reports out that you want to be seeing, you need to have provided information of, oh, that Amazon one is 123 Derby Road, that next expense is 456 Nottingham Road. So it's all of these different bits of information that you need to be working with your bookkeeper to make sure that you are collaborating on this to get the results that you want. So it's not unfortunately give it to them and they will deal with it, it's a work with them, they will do the hard work for you, but you need to be constantly communicating with them. And that is probably one of the things that I'm going to finish off with today, having kind of hopefully taken you through a very simple journey, adventure with the bookkeeping side of things, and to be honest, getting a bookkeeper is probably the end point in your bookkeeping adventure where you've done it yourself, you've done it yourself, you've not got time to do it because there's too much going on. So now you've got someone else in. But the key thing is always going to be communication because the better you can communicate with that bookkeeper, the better the results, the quicker you will get that information on. I know we have a few clients we work with and we send notes out to confirm information and it does take a couple of weeks and a couple of attempts to get that information. So it's find out what is going to be the best way to collate that information. I know we've had some clients where we email queries, they email them back. There's others where it's pick up the phone, talk them through, get the answers. There's others that will have folders on, I don't know, their Dropbox, on their Google account which are shared and each folder is for a different property. So it's kind of throw it in there. I've seen others that do it on email folders. So as invoices come in, they put them into the specific properties. So there's a whole different approach where you can manage some of these sides of things to hopefully make it run smoothly. So you know where you're at, your bookkeeper knows where you're at and it fits together but I'd probably say it takes a little bit of work to make it work with any bookkeeper. So don't just take a bookkeeper on and think it's gonna work perfectly. You need to work with them to get the right process for both parties to hopefully then make your life easier because you just have to tell them what it is rather than you've got to sit there entering invoices, saving things into the software and all that sort of thing. They'll do that for you. You just need to be receptive and responsive 
to enable the work to be done for you as effectively and efficiently as possible. That therefore hopefully means that you get the good results so you can be making the right business decisions, which as well as the compliance activity that the bookkeeping kind of ticks the box to make sure you're compliant at the end with accounts and corporation tax and self-assessment, it hopefully gives you the data, the information to help you manage your property business. As you can see, there is a bit of a adventure journey that you need to take with your bookkeeping. And the longer you're in business, the more you expand your portfolio or the different projects or sources of income you've got, the more you will have to deal with. So as things get more complicated, that's where you want to be bringing software in and potentially even a bookkeeper at the right time for you and your business. But all the way along, it's a matter of collecting the data and getting everything into the right place to give you the right information to look after your business. Hopefully today you've discovered when you should be doing different elements of bookkeeping and when you need to be doing more and when you can be getting away with not doing as much. If you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing.